Hello everyone, Neuralars Hands here, and today I have an inverter that I would like to show you. This is a Schumacher 2000 watt modified sine wave power inverter, model number PSI 2000, and it is their Pro Series. Seems to be pretty well built, has this nice carrying handle. I already have some cables on it, I just cut apart some jumper cables and put those on there. It has these four torpedo style uh, cable connections, which I don't especially like, but that's a matter of preference dual cooling fans, etc. Now, I'm not going to actually do a review on this inverter today, but I do want to see if it works. So let's just give this thing a quick test and see if it works. I could hook it up to a battery, but instead, today I'm going to hook it up to this, to this uh, power supply, which is very nice because I can adjust the voltage on it up and down. Turn it on here. I can adjust the uh, voltage up and down to as low or high as I want. So I'm just going to set this to 14.4 volts. Uh, and it may look like it's flickering on camera. Uh, it is not flickering in real life. But 14.4 uh, volts because that is approximately what a car alternator outputs. And I want to make sure this works with my car. So let's plug in some leads here. I uh, will just plug in these uh, banana jack connectors. Positive. Negative. Go over to the inverter over here and connect positive to this one and negative to the other. Now this power supply is only a 5 amp power supply so I can't power much for loads off of it but uh, I just want to see if it's working for now and we can move on after that. But 14.4 uh, volts and I'll turn it on. And there we go, it only takes uh, 0.2 amps under no load. Of course, that's assuming it's working. So, I'm going to grab my multimeter. I just have this little cheapo thing from Harbor Freight. I think I got this for uh, free with a purchase or something, I don't know. But, I'll turn this thing on, set it to AC volts, turn it on so you can see it, and put these leads into the receptacle. One in here, one in here. And we've got uh, uh, 80, 80 volts, 80.2 volts. Huh. Wow, this is a really cheap meter. I don't know. Let me grab a different meter quick. All right, this is a much nicer meter. This is uh, also a Harbor Freight unit. Uh, it has some interesting functions measures decibels, for example, which is kind of neat. You can see as I talk, the decibels go up. But uh, anyway, we don't care about that. So let's set this on AC volts and see what this better quality meter says. Maybe that other one is just broken. Um, positive, negative, and uh, huh. Well, it is different by a couple of volts, but 82 volts. Well, that's not acceptable. I can't use an inverter that just outputs 82 volts. I mean, that, that kind of pisses me off. Now I'm going to have to return this thing to the guy I bought it from, ship it back to him. That kind of sucks. But uh, maybe it's just my setup, so let me grab another inverter that I've been using for a while and compare it, see how that one looks on the same setup. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong here. Perhaps this power supply isn't strong enough for this inverter or something. So I'm going to turn it off, unhook it all, and uh, set this thing aside, because this inverter doesn't appear to work anyway. Let's throw it over here in the junk pile, and I'll get a different inverter. Here we go. I like this one. This is a Xantrex X-Power 1500. This uh, seems to be a pretty nice inverter. I used it before. Open up the box. Uh, take it out of its packaging here and we'll hook it up and see if this inverter works on the exact same setup. Okay, we have an inverter here. And I'll hook up the uh, power just like before. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Turn it on, 14.4 volts, very good. 
turn on my inverter. Here's my multimeter once again. And this inverter also takes about 0.2 amps, no load, which is not too bad. So this is the same multimeter, same power supply, same pretty much everything. Plug this thing in, and there we go, 124.7 volts. So it's verified. That other inverter must be bad. No, that other inverter works perfectly, actually. And this is what I want to mention here. If you get an inverter that's not outputting the proper voltage, it's probably your multimeter, not the inverter. And let me go grab that other, other inverter again and show you what I mean. This multimeter is not a true RMS multimeter. It says it's 125 volts, and that's probably incorrect. This is the multimeter that I usually use for these videos. This is a true RMS multimeter. And if I plug this into here, it will show us the proper voltage for this inverter, which does happen to be about the same voltage. But if we go to the waveform of it, you can see that the waveform is a squarish wave. Ah, the lead fell out. Try it again. That it is a squarish wave. It's not a sine wave. It is a modified sine wave inverter, 123 volts. So let's check out that other inverter one more time on a true RMS multimeter and see if it's working. All right, I have the other inverter hooked up again, just like before, except this time I have a true RMS multimeter. And we'll see what this one reads. Turn it on. And plug in my test leads. And there we go, it's 115 volts. This inverter works just fine, but if I use a non-RS multimeter, it reads the wrong voltage. And one more thing that I want to show here is the waveform. Notice that this waveform looks quite a bit different than the waveform of that other inverter. This one has a lot higher peaks and a lot longer off time on the waveform, on the modified sine waveform. And look what happens when I adjust the voltage. Right now it's 14.4 volts. If I adjust the voltage down, 12 volts, notice that the waveform is changing. If we keep going to 11, notice that the waveform is now a lot more similar to the other inverter. But it is still about 115 volts. However, if we go grab our non-RMS multime multimeter now, We'll go back to this original super cheap one. Plug this guy into the outlet. Notice that the voltage is different. It's now 101 volts, according to this one. It is wrong, but it will read a different voltage depending on what your input voltage is. And basically, these non-RMS multi RMS multimeters simply cannot be used to measure inverter outputs. And I see this comment a lot on Amazon reviews and uh, in many other places people plug a multimeter into their inverter and they complain that it doesn't work and they send it back and give bad feedback. But most of the time it's just your meter. Now sometimes they do fail and output the wrong voltage or wrong waveform etc. But for the most part just make sure you use an RMS multimeter and you'll be okay. So the question that most people probably have at this point is how can I say that both inverters work properly? when very clearly they are different. One of them reads properly on all of the multimeters that I tested, around 120 volts-ish. The other one changes its voltage depending on what input voltage it gets. Could be as low as 80 volts or as high as 120. There's clearly something wrong with that inverter, right? Well, no, that's just how it works. And the difference between these two inverters is that the Xantrex inverter is a phase corrected modified sine wave inverter and the Schumacher inverter is not. So yes, the X power inverter is a better inverter in that respect, but there is nothing wrong with the Schumacher inverter and it will still power all of your loads uh, acceptably well with a few exceptions, laser printers and certain other things, but the Xantrex inverter is a little bit better. So let's first start with a, 
a general block diagram of how an inverter works to describe this difference here. So you start with 12 volts. 12 volts at DC, as from a car battery. So you get your 12 volts in, and it goes into a block here. We'll call this the boost stage. 12 volts DC in, and maybe 180 volts DC out. 180 DC volts out. So you now have 12 volts DC in, 180 volts DC out, and then it goes into a, another block, and we'll call this the inverter stage. So this inverts the voltage, swaps back and forth in polarity, and uh, this goes out to your, your outlets. Whatever your outlets look like in your particular country, ours look like a smiley face. But uh, in any case, this is in general how the inverter works. But a phase corrected inverter works just slightly different than a non phase corrected inverter. And that difference is in the boost stage and in the invert stage and how the two relate to each other. So, in a, a typical inverter that is not phase corrected, you may get a, uh, let's just call it a 12 to 1 boost in the boost stage. And this is fixed and it doesn't change. It's just dumb. All it does is it runs. It runs off of some sort of fixed oscillator and it just goes. That's all it does. It doesn't take any smarts. It just boosts it at a 12 to 1 ratio. And it may not be 12 to 1, it might be 13 to 1, 14 to 1, 11 to 1, depending on what the designers chose. But let's think about this for a moment. Let's say that your input voltage is uh, 10 volts. So if you get 10 volts input, that means that you're either drawing a heavy load out of your battery and your battery voltage is drooping, or your battery is almost fully discharged, so it's down at 10 volts. It boosts it up to 120 volts because it's a 12 to 1 boost. So we'll go from 10 volts to 120 volts. But now you want 120 volts out. So when it gets to the invert stage, which now gets 120 volts DC, what kind of waveform do you get? Well, you get this waveform. A square wave. And that is not the waveform that you want. This should be a modified sine wave. Let's take the other extreme. Let's say you have 15 volts input and you get a 12 to 1 boost. This yields a really high voltage. So what does your output waveform look like? Well, it modifies this invert stage to get a RMS voltage that is correct, but you end up with a voltage that looks something like this. Again, not a very good sine wave, but the RMS voltage approximates 120 volts. They don't need to have any smarts here. All they do is measure the RMS voltage and modify the invert stage. It's very cheap to do. Most people don't know any better, and this is acceptable for a lot of loads. But it's not the best way to do it. A phase corrected inverter does this a little bit differently. The boost stage up here is not a fixed ratio, or rather it is, but they PWM the boost so that you get a, uh, a variable voltage out. But I'm going to ignore that <clears throat> and just say that this boost stage is variable. So it's not a fixed, say, 12 to 1. It can change slightly depending on your load, your battery voltage, and other factors. So it tries to keep this DC voltage constant. The DC voltage doesn't fluctuate up and down with your DC uh, battery voltage or your load because there's losses in this boost stage. So if you draw a heavy load, this boost is not a 12 to 1 because you lose some voltage in it. If your load is heavy, if your load is light, you lose almost nothing and your voltage goes up and there's lots of things here. But if it's phase corrected, it corrects for this. The boost stage maybe instead of 12 to 1, ends up being, uh, we'll just call it uh, 14 to 1, which gives you a wider range of possible voltages, so that when your battery voltage drops to 10 volts, you're not fixed at 120. You can still get 140 volts, and at 140 volts, you can still approximate a pretty good sine wave. And you get this instead of this. Much, much better. Likewise, if your battery voltage is high, 15 volts, you're not stuck with this. It just changes this boost stage so that instead of 14 to 1, maybe it's 
10 to 1 or 11 to 1, and then you end up with this exact same waveform once again. There are limitations. At too high or too low of a battery voltage, it may not be able to approximate this sine wave properly, but it does a better job than a non-phase corrected sine phase corrected inverter. Now the next question may be why does the multimeter matter or what's the difference in the multimeter? Why does it read these differently? Well it's a subject for a later video that I plan to do. True RMS multimeters, how they work and, uh, and how the non-true MS multimeters work and, and what it really means for this. But another important aspect here is the the loads that you're trying to power off of your inverter, do they really care if it's phase corrected or not? A non-phase corrected inverter may be anywhere between this square wave and a waveform like this. And it depends on load, temperature, battery voltage, all kinds of things, exactly where it is within here. A phase corrected inverter, except at the very extremes of load and battery voltage, will look the same. Looks something like this. Now, does that matter? Yes, it matters, and it matters quite a bit. And that's because a lot of loads can only use the fundamental frequency of 60 Hz, or 50 Hz, depending on where you live. And there's something called total harmonic distortion that I won't go into details in this particular video here, but let's just say that the lower your distortion, the more efficient your loads. If you're trying to power an electric motor off of something like this, it may only be able to use one half of the power that you give it. The other half is wasted in heat, causes the motor over to overheat, causes a higher battery draw, all sorts of bad things. And the same thing happens here. It's not good. If you go down here, the total harmonic distortion of this waveform is lower, and you end up with more efficient appliances. There are some things that don't really care. For example, switching power supplies and computers and televisions and such. They really don't care a whole lot which waveform they get, but a lot of things do. So the point here of this video is that if your multimeter reads anything other than what you expect the voltage to be, you may want to verify that you are using a true RMS multimeter. If you're not, it cannot be trusted when measuring inverter outputs. It's your multimeter, not the inverter. On the other hand, Phase correction versus non-phase correction on inverters uh, is something to look for. A phase corrected inverter is a little bit better inverter. Not all of them do that. In fact, I see less and less of them doing that because more and more so people are just buying the cheapest thing they can find on the shelf. The older ones used to be better than the newer ones in my experience. But this is what phase correction is. And this is difficult to find, I found, uh, in terms of what is a phase corrected inverter you search for that and you don't really find any results well this is what it means it means that it varies this boost stage and the invert stage so that you get a waveform that is consistent and it always looks like something like this except in the extreme cases if you load it very heavily you still could get a waveform that looks like this but it does try at least to correct it to look something like this then you don't get this and you don't get this you get something that is a much better approximation to a true sine wave than either of these. In any case, if you get an inverter and it doesn't appear to be outputting the proper voltage, check your multimeter. And also, if you're looking for an inverter, it may be worth asking, is my inverter phase corrected? That is a good feature to look for. This is Neural Nars Hands, and thanks for watching.